High-rise construction jobs are at risk. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Steiner coffee, let's have a look at this article, originally from the Fin Review, from commercialrealestate.com.au, discussing high-rise construction jobs at risk. A big part of this is to do with the severe lockdowns in Victoria, you know, 166,000 jobs, guys. And I know we had commenters in the channel saying that they're working on a high-rise job, so they're in a lucky position because they've got work secured for another year. Maybe not. Maybe not. The problem with the construction game, it's a big employer. It's a big part of our, big part of our economy. And building approvals are trending down, everyone. They're trending down, so future work is starting to dry up. Depending on who you talk to in the game, some people are busy at the moment, but the pipeline is getting a bit scant, a bit quieter. So more than 166,000 workers are at risk of being stood down from high-rise construction projects in Victoria as a result of new controls due to take effect midnight on Friday in an effort to curb the spread of the pandemic. And we've seen those have already taken effect. Project data analyst for the Australian Financial Review shows that Greater Melbourne, the region of Victoria subject to the tightest restrictions, account for 735 of the state's 832 largest projects and employ more than 222,000 people on them. There are probably around 222,000 jobs in Melbourne at the moment that are dependent on getting on with building, said Kerry Barwise, consulting economist for the Australian Construction Industry Forum industry body. If you take the government's announcement at face value, 75% of those are at risk. Because, well, the government wants to put everything in pilot light mode. In pilot light mode. So that means, well, only allowing 25% of the workforce on the jobs. How's that going to affect it? I understand the reasoning behind it. Because you want to have the construction sites manned because there's an inherent risk there. If you abandon it, a lot of problems can happen. It's interesting what they're closing in Victoria, what they're closing, but what they're keeping open. Certain people who, you know, might abuse substances can have access to facilities past the curfew. Look at what's essential services guys out of Richmond. That's just infuriating people. You know, but that's, that's Victoria, guys. That's Victoria. Good old, good old Comrade Andrews. Construction, like many other industries in the pandemic hit state, is trying to make sense of the sweeping rules laid out on Monday. That include reducing staff on large construction pro projects to a practical minimum, minimum of no more than 25% of their normal workforce in the next six weeks. That's just going to be such a pain in the ass to logistically manage. Could you imagine dealing with that on your side? How are you going to enforce that? You're going to say, okay, you know, or only, you're just going to drag out the projects. You're going to drag out the projects. There are concerns, not just about staffing numbers, but also about the separate ruling that people can work only on site over the stage four restrictions. So, sorry, can work only on one site over the stage four restrictions. So if you've, how, how is that going to work? Only on one site. So if you've got people working on multiple sites, I can see why. I can see why. But if you've got, you know, a little firm and you've got one job here, another job here, and you've got the same people, how are you going to move them from one to the other as a subby? How is that going to work? That's insane. That is just insane. That's going to affect businesses. It means you're going to have to pick and choose which builder you're going to work for. If you're a subby, that's going to destroy your relationships, guys. How the hell is this? Bloody hell. This is a nightmare. This really is a nightmare. Have they even thought this through, the implications of this? Just look at the drastic interventions we're making. The unintended consequence that consequences that are occurring here is it worth it everyone is it worth it builders say they could just halt the specialists and skilled trades people who normally work across several sites so it's just crazy i'm getting calls left right and center it's just crazy at the moment builder christian bonani said mr bonani is the director of his family's construction company which is building four childcare centers across suburban melbourne worth a collective six million on one, my painter is finishing this week, and the next childcare centre in line is ready for them on Monday morning. Can he go to the next site? Yes. 
let me know guys if more news has come out dealing with these issues because this is this is just crazy this is just crazy with uh, banani construction group also subject to the five workers only on-site requirement he is now also juggling all his projects and workers coming and going just on one little site i had to shift something that was supposed to happen next wednesday to the following monday that's six extra days just on that one job he said this is going to affect my program on all my jobs the rules announced by premier daniel andrews failed to take into account the practical measures that building sites were already applying to reduce transmission risks of the virus aci's mr barwai said yes they, i mean I've, I've been talking to builders if they've, they've implemented strategies in place i mean come on this this is the thing this is the thing do you want to take these draconian measures that cause so much damage and disruption or do you want to mitigate strategies in place to minimize transmission and then isolate and secure provide additional protection for those at higher level of risk because you've got to understand guys this isn't going to eradicate this virus it's not possible it's going to we've still got it in other states it's going to keep going around But the economic consequences are definitely measurable. Inflexible hard rules that cut across the management should be avoided, he said. They're not necessarily enhancing safety, but they're definitely limiting the capacity to do the job. They should take better account of the risk management strategies that have been applied. So only a broad indicator. Construction employs around 340,000 people in Victoria. ACIF's calculation of all people normally working on site are not a snapshot of activity this week. Some projects on the list will already be close to completion and will not have full number of people working on site. Others may not have stepped up to their full complement. It's a broad indicator of the magnitude of construction workers who are likely to be caught up in this, Mr. Barwai said. It's not a precise estimate of the exact number of people. In order to stand down three quarters of staff on large projects, which the state government defines as stage as four stories or more, would put huge cash flow pressure on builders slatery quantity surveyor mark pickerill said closing down for a pandemic point of view makes sense but from a builder's point of view they've got to be prepared to open when the government goes covid's no longer an issue they have to go from a 25 percent up to 100 percent of workforce as a builder or a subcontractor you've got to hold your staff so you can get started again that's the issue that's the issue. If you want to hold, if you've got to hold onto the people over this period, that can be an additional cost, an additional. Oh boy, the supply chain would also be hit as materials and plants ordered and delivered would now be delayed in their use on site. Construction lawyer Bryce Anderson said supplies will no doubt want to be paid. However, contractors will wait longer to recoup payment in payment claims, which will affect cash flow. So we can see how this is just a mess guys just a mess what do you think are you working in the game down in melbourne how's it going how's it going how's the pipeline how's this going to affect your prospects are you going to keep your boys on if you've got a team over this period can you afford to do it bloody hell guys all of this is just a damn mess as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. I'll see you all in the next episode.